welcome. I'm proud to introduce Allison Nicholas, one of our members. If you hire technology talent or happen to be looking for a job, this is the person in Arkansas to connect with. Allison really understands the dynamic technology talent market. Today, Allison will speak about the COVID effects on hiring and retaining technology in employees. It's a broad topic, which Allison knows a lot about. If you haven't already felt the tremors to change, you will after her presentation. Who would think that a little virus could do so much to change the technology job sphere? Allison is the director of recruiting at Matova. She has been an integral part of helping several major companies build teams they need so that they could be leading and innovative technology companies right here in Arkansas. Allison does more than just find top talent. She nurtures it in students and inspires it in the public. She was inducted into the Academy in 2011. Okay, Allison, it's yours. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Eugene, for the opportunity to be here tonight. Um, certainly one of my most favorite topics to discuss, of course, is recruiting in Arkansas and specifically, um, you know, what's been going on, you know, what's been going on um, uh, post COVID, COVID and now, of course, present um, opportunities to really grow and develop um, in our state. Now, I'm going to reference some notes here I've been working on for a couple of days, so um, but, um, feel free to interrupt this is going to be a conversation and I know we've got to get to some really fabulous new inductees but um this is a topic I love to talk about and we'll be glad to chat at another time so you know um technology hiring and retention um has drastically changed of course during COVID and it's provided an opportunity to um look at things differently um have an opportunity to reach out to a broader community in unique ways at the same time we've addressed a lot of um you know, isolation and opportunity to um, really miss a greater community. And so I'm grateful for tonight just to have a chance to see all your great faces and um, chat about some really interesting topics. So let's talk about post COVID. You know, we were all just running right along, doing our normal stuff, you know, basically doing on site recruiting. We were bring, bringing uh, people in for, um, for on trips to visit our, our headquarters. We were basically doing our day to day, you know. Um, some phone tour, some phone conversations, uh, some video interviews. Um, we were attending career fairs in person. We were um, attending a technical events on site, much like we were doing um, this past month with the Northwest Arkansas Tech Summit. We were getting back to the opportunity to interact with one another. Corporate culture, of course, involved on site, virtual events, remote work, uh, to some extent. Um, we had coffee bars, we had company meetings, we had social team events right there in our corporate environments, like everyday activities we would normally expect. Um, healthcare services were a part of our benefits programs that we took advantage of and benefited from greatly. Um, tools like Zoom, uh, Google Meet, uh, Microsoft Teams, Slack were part of our day-to-day -day communication and never thought another thing about how much we would not like Zoom after a long time period of time. <laughs> um, um, travel to customer sites, you know, um, people coming back and forth. Um, in the workspaces were different. Of course, we had open workspaces, we had movable desks, um, we had a close proximity, proximity to our peers. Um, when you think back of all that, how common that was, it was just every day, right? We're seeing our peers interacting with one another, sitting in meetings, and um, enjoying corporate culture in a way that we just took for granted in lots of ways. And um, I still celebrate that time and looking forward to a time where we can all be back together in different ways. Um, and I believe that COVID is requiring that for sure. Moving on to COVID-19, you know, um, I would describe that as a, a, a time of lack of community that we really missed to some extent and, and people connected with one another in person, to some extent isolation. You know, I'll never forget the career fair that I went to at Hendricks College. It was the last career fair I was able to attend in person before COVID hit. And we had interviewed candidates, we had talked to a lot of candidates, and I had to call them and tell them that we could not um, extend offers for internships. And they were so, they felt so isolated. They had had to go home. They had had to uh, make different situations um, appropriate for their lives because they were, of course, not safe in certain situations. So um, it was a big time of transition, of course, transition um, to remote, transition to home, transition to new spaces. Um, the concerns about infrastructure and security were a high priority for campuses and companies alike. Um, 
they were, we were basically concerned about employee safety. We were concerned about work-life balance, including family and children and pets and all kinds of things that were going on at the time that we began to address our lives together um, um, from work to work-life balance. Healthcare services became overloaded and a high priority. And also, of course, including um, child care services and um, those impacts of you know, virtual telemedicine and things like that that began to evolve very quickly and in, in a very important role. Educational institutions, of course, the public schools, universities and colleges, training organizations all adapted to try to meet the needs of their, their audiences. And we all experienced that in many, many ways. Um, the economic impact, of course, began to affect employers that led to both growth and decline in regards to um, their customers. Who would have thought that the food industry delivery organizations would be a number one employer right off the bat because of the need for food delivery and for the need of um, telemedicine and things like that. You know, we had customers that automatically at Matova began to provide unique services and their business began to grow and others had to slow roll or begin to think more, more con uh, basically conclusively about long-term planning and extending the time windows of their projects. So um, time was really interesting, of course, and continues to be today. Um, one of the things that impacted me personally was how many of my peers lost their jobs. I'm sure you guys saw all of that, but many, many recruiters nationwide lost their jobs and had to spend more time kind of recreating their career paths and had an opportunity to reskill and consider alternative career paths. Um, the candidates, of course, began to really think about how to reprioritize their job search and conversations were very interesting. I remember having a very senior individual apply for a position and I, I called and talked to him specifically about the role and, and he said, you know, Allison, um, I'm working from remote. I'm not able to commute anywhere. So I'm saving about an hour and a half a day and I'm not spending the money. I'm not I'm not um, as concerned as I am about um, health care benefits. And I'd like to also know about the scope of work. I want to do important work. I want to be able to work with people that can help me grow and develop and also pr provide meaningful day-to-day -day work that I will enjoy and feel passionate about. And so we, we saw a senior person adapting his life to meet a need that he had personally and his life had adjusted significantly because of COVID. Um, quality of life, you know, local and regional experiences became really a high priority to our, to our, to our customers as well as to our employees. And what kind of experience can they, could they create for themselves online as they thought about where they wanted to live, where they want, how they wanted to spend their time, they began to think about experiences and what that was going to meet for them and their family and where they could have those experiences outside or in locations of importance. So as they began to think about where they wanted to work, where they wanted to relocate to, the, um, the location and experiences outside of work became a really high priority and we could hear that day to day in the conversations and I hear my peers talking about that as well quite often. Um, you know, the, the technical reports uh, support system for me and for my peers in Arkansas were really um, very unique. Um, the Little Rock Chamber of Commerce be began in Little Rock, Central, um, Little, Central Arkansas recruiting group. It was basically a Slack channel. And we, 15 of us came together and we basically shared resumes. We um, looked at trailing spouses related individuals, people who needed to find jobs to be able to stay in Arkansas. So we began to communicate on Slack regularly and share resumes of people who were looking. Um, sometimes they were college students who had really important needs that needed to be addressed. And we shared and collaborated through that network. Um, I will also recognize the Northwest Arkansas, um, finding Northwest Arkansas organization who basically did a phenomenal job. I know many of us in Arkansas re received um, spreadsheets on a weekly basis about talent that needed jobs, people who were trying to come home to be near their families, people who were trying to find jobs um, and willing to move to Arkansas. Of course, I'm sure we're all aware of um, the massive approach they took to attract talent through um, a significant recruiting initiative, um, signing bonuses, really supporting the outdoor activities such as biking and hiking, those types of things that really highlighted Arkansas in so many unique ways, um, which is really exciting for all of us. They created an internal applicant tracking system for us to use to post jobs, to be able to find talent quickly. Um, we just saw Arkansas really pivot to say, what is, what is, what do our employers need? What do our recruiters need? And more importantly, what do our what do Arkansas citizens need to be able to stay here, to be employed, and to enjoy life, and, and basically reignite in a way that's purposeful in their lives, tied to work. 
and into personal life. So um, it was really um, impressive. It is an impressive time still, but uh, during that time, we really appreciated the, the passion that these organizations had for us, those of us who were recruiting, those of us looking for jobs, and those of us, of course, who were trying to hire people during a very difficult time. I would also like to recognize Dave Wingle and his team. Identify was also a very important tool for us to begin to understand and benefit from um, as a, a way to you know, identify um, entry-level talent and potential talent um, long-term pipeline. Um, the Arkansas Jobs website we, we currently have access to and have had for many years was another great way to make a referral. Um, other networking groups like the Northwest Arkansas Dev Group, which is basically a Slack channel, is a way to reach out to developers that were awesome to share information about jobs and people looking for opportunities. So the whole Slack community came together virtually in lots of ways in Arkansas and other regional areas, really nationwide, to help us identify and talk about issues and connect with under individuals who are looking for jobs and, uh, and also just to get to know more people. The Arkansas Code Academy, of course, has continued to um, pump out great talent. You know, I, I just went to a demo day more recently uh, last week, which I really enjoyed to see individuals coming out looking for jobs and willing and putting a willingness, I guess, in their lives to change and to create a new career path without any technical background. So uh, it's always a pleasure to be involved with them. I would also say the Center, uh, the Arkansas Center for Data Sciences, has continued to, to create a very dedicated approach to um, training talent to um, creating the apprenticeship programs and offering those in multiple areas for employers. I know Mato has benefited from that most definitely. I would also say the Ready for Life initiative is very important and one that I look forward to hearing more about as our state collaborates across the public school system, the two and four year institutions and industry to determine where the talent is, where they're going, and also um, how we can collaborate through learning tools and resources to help leverage our state from K through 12 to retirement. So it's another really important program that's been, that's come along this past um, couple of years during COVID, before and, and during COVID. And of course, now, as we look forward to times where we can actually be more present, you know, um, together in, um, in our various locations. Um, I would also say that I would like to recognize Joel Gordon and the many people in the maker community who really made a huge difference in our state by um, connecting people to unique job opportunities, utilizing their skill sets that they had not been able to previously in such an important and meaningful way. So um, they did a phenomenal job and I looked to them many times to the way to connect to network and think about jobs and opportunities to connect skill with people that I hadn't before. So I really appreciate that what they did for us. As we look to today, you know, I have to use the words, um, the great resignation as a way to talk about way, the ways that people are thinking about what they really want to do, their lives and their whole concept of work-life balance, the family, have come to, um, to be addressed in their personal lives. What do I really want to do? How do I want to spend my time, um, the impact on my family, on my personal life, and the activities and places I want to go and things that I want to do have a great impact about how people think about jobs, what they want to do with their lives and also how they wanna spend their time. Are they interested in a full-time job? Do they wanna be a contractor? They wanna completely re-engineer re and revision their lives according to work. So it's, it's really an interesting time. Um, the national job market, of course, can certainly have a great, a great impact on all of us nationwide. Um, Arkansas Talent is looking um, nationally as far as job opportunities and career path long-term. So it does impact um, the compensation we're looking at, the talent that is staying in Arkansas and working for companies nationwide, and those that may choose to relocate, excuse me, relocate. Um, we also have an opportunity as an employer to look nationwide for talent and help recruit them to Arkansas, either virtually or over time, physically to our, to our um, state. Um, as far as types of, types of work, and where, where we're seeing um, employers turn toward physical space or hybrid space or um, you know, fully back in the office. I find that employ um, basically talent and employers are looking for ways to create a balance as they can. I will say right now, Mato Matova is fully remote and we enjoy that capability. Um, we do have our physical space leased out and we have opportunities basically to go back to our physical space as needed. But it's worked out well for us to be a remote company as we've obviously faced COVID, come through COVID, and of course, as we look forward to our workforce, what we may need. Every company has been very different. Um, I hear a lot of technical talent looking for remote. 
preferring remote, but at the same time, they're looking for a great job um, or, or to do important and meaningful work. And at the same time, you know, basically progress in their career. Um, I want to also recognize the importance and we all speak to it every day, which is what is our tech community now in Arkansas? What does it look like? Who is involved? Um, how do we reignite a passion for great events? You know, the, many, many come to mind, like the Arkansas Tech Summit. Um, the others might be um, made by a few, um, Tech Fest, Bar Camp, the Raspberry Pi Bake Off, you know, the technical user groups. I mean, all those things are some of my favorite over my career here in Arkansas and continue to be. And I look forward to those events coming, you know, coming through to full fruition and being able to be there physically in space, in the space or wherever they're going to be. Now, they do need funding. They also need opportunities to be recognized and supported. So I ask that all of you think about ways in which we can reignite the technical community in both virtually as they continue to grow and develop, but also as they choose to become more, you know, physical space oriented. Um, you know, we have so many more to talk about um, that are doing great work. You know, the Governor's Commission on Computer Science and Cybersecurity has been a very rewarding experience for all of us. And it's so fun to be out there recruiting and seeing students on campus talking about computer science from, you know, K through 12 into high school and college, you know, knowing that um, our, our, uh, our state has made that possible in so many ways. Um, I also appreciate the great work, of course, that's Anthony Owen, the cybersecurity um, focus area for training and development, the Forge Institute with Lee Watson, um, the, the workforce technical training organizations, the Department of Education is making significant strides. Um, you know, I, I just think we have to also be aware that um, technical communities um, are very diverse. They need to continue to be diverse in thought, uh, diverse in population, and also diverse, diverse in regards to career path. The, in Conway, we have a new organization called the uh, Creative Institute, who is very passionate about creating um, careers for Arkansans across the state, geared toward art, geared toward graphic design, um, UI, UX related career paths. So, you know, as a story, as we think about where we've been and where what we've experienced and where we're going, I, I experience myself personally a lot of hope um, for our state, for the technical talent and the great people of Arkansas. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just passionate about it. <laughs> Thank you for your time and I wish you all the best. Thank you, Allison. It's uh, pretty good, uh, and it is. Go ahead. I'm done. <laughs> it's a good talk, and a lot of things are changing. Uh, you know, right now in the job market, it's just kind of amazing to me. Many people going, you know, fully remote. So where does it matter where you work? You know, you can be in Arkansas and enjoy our outdoors and. The great things that we have here are you can be in California and be overcrowded. I mean, you know, can go either way. Uh, 